Have you ever paused to question the claim that flying is the safest form of travel? It's an assertion that's been reiterated so many times, it's almost become a universal truth. But what if the numbers behind this belief aren't as clear-cut as they seem? One could argue that the fairest way to compare safety is by considering the number of fatalities per distance traveled. In this context, the numbers seem to favor flying over driving. After all, commercial airlines can cover thousands of miles in a single flight and fatal accidents are relatively rare. But let's flip the script. What if the comparison was based on the number of fatalities per trip instead? Suddenly, the tables turn. Considering that most car journeys are relatively short and a typical flight is much longer, the number of fatal car accidents per trip is actually lower than that of airplane accidents. However, it's important to note that the flying statistics we've been discussing are primarily for large, long-distance air travel conducted by professionals. On the other hand, the statistics for car and sea travel used for comparison include all types of journeys, from a quick trip to the grocery store, to a cross-country road trip, to a leisurely sail on a lake. Most sea travel accidents, for example, occur with small, non-professionally steered ships. This discrepancy can skew our perception of safety across different modes of travel. It's also crucial to consider that when presenting these statistics, the flying industry often picks and chooses what to include for their own benefit. For instance, they may opt to dismiss small plane accidents as irrelevant, thereby painting a skewed picture of safety in air travel. Similarly, the individual responsibility car drivers in accidents is often overlooked and not factored into the statistics. This too contributes to an imbalanced view of safety. Therefore, when comparing safety, it's not only important to consider the context of the statistics we're using, but also to critically examine the inherent biases in how these statistics are presented. Let's delve deeper into the underpinnings of our perception of air travel safety. The flying industry, understandably, has a vested interest in promoting the safety of air travel. They spend millions on advertising campaigns and media coverage to shape public perception and encourage more people to fly. However, it's important to understand the dynamics of the flying industry here. It is largely monopolized by a handful of colossal corporations with deep pockets. Their financial gives them an unmatched ability to lobby for a positive portrayal in media. Even supposedly, objective scientific sources aren't immune to this influence, and findings can be subtly steered to present a rosier picture of air travel safety. This underscores the crucial need for us as consumers to question and critically evaluate the information presented to us, especially when it comes to matters as vital as our safety. In contrast to the flying industry, there's no single company benefiting from advocating the safety of car travel. The car industry is diverse, with hundreds of manufacturers and thousands of models, each with its own safety record. Similarly, train and ship travel is run by many small companies that compete with each other. They simply don't have the same resources to shape public perception as the flying industry does. This means that safety information on these modes of travel is less likely to be skewed by corporate interests. The flying industry, with its few major players and high stakes, has been the sole manipulator of the public perception on this matter. Therefore, it's important to consider who is delivering the safety message and their potential biases. The next time you come across a safety statistic, ask yourself, who stands to gain from this information? Let's now look at some unbiased statistics on the matter. When evaluating the safety of any mode of transport, it's critical to consider the number of fatalities in relation to the number of people who use that mode and how often. For instance, more people may die in car accidents than in plane crashes each year, but many more people use cars every day compared to planes. So the odds of being involved in a car accident are naturally higher. When we take these factors into account, the safety record of flying doesn't appear as impressive as it's often portrayed. In fact, it's more nuanced and depends heavily on the specific circumstances of each trip, such as the distance traveled and the conditions under which it's undertaken. So while flying might still be safer than other forms of travel in certain respects, it's not as clear cut as the flying industry would have you believe. Always remember to consider these factors when evaluating the safety of your travel options. Let's now consider other alternatives like sea and train travel. These modes of transport are used for wildly different purposes and lengths of travel, which makes comparisons difficult. For instance, trains are more often used for shorter intercity trips, while ships are generally used for longer international journeys. These differences in usage patterns can heavily skew any comparisons we might make. Moreover, 
any comparison we make inevitably suffers from statistical bias one way or another. For instance, if we were to compare the safety of sea travel to that of air travel, the statistics might be biased towards sea travel simply because it's used less frequently. Conversely, if we were to compare the safety of train travel to that of car travel, the statistics might be biased towards train travel simply because it's used more frequently. In other words, there's no objective way of comparing the safety of such different modes of travel. Each mode has its own unique set of risks and benefits, and these need to be weighed up individually rather than directly compared. So when considering safety, remember that comparisons between modes of travel are not as straightforward as they may seem. It's crucial to think critically and consider the specific circumstances of your journey before drawing any conclusions. When you hear the phrase, flying is the safest way to travel, it's not a mere suggestion, it's a calculated lie. A fabrication churned out by the very industry that profits from this fantastical image of safety. The air travel industry, like any corporate behemoth, is driven by profits, not your well-being. They paint a rosy picture of air travel as the safest mode of transportation, not because it's the truth, but because it feeds their greed, selling more tickets. This is a deliberate distortion of facts, a manipulation of perception, and while it's true that air travel isn't necessarily unsafe, these corporations are guilty of sugarcoating the reality to serve their own interests. Never forget to question the source of these claims and take a hard look at the context. Because remember, safety is not a catchy slogan to be bandied about by profit-hungry corporations. It's a complex, multifaceted issue, far too important to be reduced to a mere marketing buzzword.